Ew. Ladies and gentlemen, come gather around, come gather around, come gather around. Today, on this wonderful PT Cruiser, I am going to be, reluctantly, doing the timing belt. <sighs> and because I'm going in there anyways, I got a front crank seal, cam seals, and I got two belts. The kit should be coming with a water pump as well. We'll find out when we get in there. This job pays eight hours to a professional, which means at 150 bucks an hour for labor, you're looking at, what, $1,200 just in labor alone, and then add all the other stuff, you're looking at 1,500 bucks to $2,000 just to do this job, which is why this PT Cruiser can be had for cheap. We paid 500 bucks. At the end of this, we'll see if it's $400 too much. But we're gonna put it in, keep this thing going. It just spat over 330,000 K due for a timing belt. I'm putting one in. So I've never done one of these before. I'm honestly not looking forward to it. <sighs> Let's go. Nice tunes. So where to start? This is not going to be so much a tutorial on how to do this, but rather a reflective uh, vignette of why you should not do this. Um, I don't mind buying a cheap car and putting some labor into it, but I had no idea just how much labor went into this. Oh my gosh. Apparently I didn't hit record. I did split the air conditioning lines there was no pressure, there was very little pressure in the system. The AC wasn't working anyway, so I did not actually puke this to atmosphere. We'll probably look at how to recharge it and fix whatever the issues are. I disconnected the cruise control bracket to something that I didn't need to disconnect in all in the effort to get this motor mount out. This attaches to the front of the motor, this attaches to the inner fender, and as you can see, it pretty much <laughs> needs replacement anyways. So I have a new one coming. And the one down below is pooched as well. So I neglected to show how to remove it. Just use your imagination. I did, however, have to buy a new harmonic balancer puller. I did not have this one before, but this is the one you want. It's, it's not a typical kind of front snout of, a, of an engine that at least I'm used to seeing. This one pushes a rod through the wee hole in the front of the harmonic balancer. Don't know, it's just the way it is. So I had to wait a little bit for that to come back from Amazon. There is a third motor mount in the middle. There's one on the top, one on the bottom. This guy's in the middle just to swear at you when you're trying to make things work. Got that apart. There's a bracket. You see that bracket on the right-hand side? You're going to want to remove that. Oh my gosh, you're going to want to remove that. I didn't know you needed to remove that. I didn't know it was removable. It is removable. Remove it. Your whole world will be infinitely better if you just remove that. You get to see the saga, the drama, the carnage of me trying to get this stupid motor plate out of this mail slot post office kind of thing, trying to just get it apart so I can change the stupid timing belt. And there's most of this will be a voiceover because otherwise you're just going to hear a whole bunch of honk beep cuckoo. There's it was awful. And it's me swearing at Chrysler and angry because my hands don't fit in there. In this view, I'm removing the three bolts that hold the power steering pump. Do you see them? I don't. And you won't either when you're trying to get in there with, you know, I've three hands and an air tool and you can't move a ratchet in there. It's just like, what were they thinking when they put this together? Oh my gosh. See the bracket still there taunting me as I'm trying to remove this stupid motor plate? Oh my goodness. But then I had a bright idea of what if I took the top cover off? Because maybe if the cover comes off, I can slide that thing through. Turns out, no. Um, I did end up removing even the cam sprockets to try and get that stupid big steel plate out of there. Which, while I'm doing that, I'm thinking... You can't put it back together this way. I can't put the belt on. I can't put the bracket in. You can't do this assembled. So it might behoove you to watch a different YouTube video on the PT Cruiser and not this one. Because, man, um, just so you're looking for it, there's three holes on each one of these covers. You know, just because you can't see them, this is where they are. Kind of nice, nice to know what you're looking for when you can't see any of it. Um, oh, this is... Because the top motor mount was shot and the bottom motor mount was shot, why not replace that middle one as well? well I'll tell you why not. Because you can't get to it. 
and you undo all these bolts and you can't get them out. Probably because the steel plate is in there because I didn't remove the bracket on the top of the inner fender. And once you got that bracket out, the steel plate can come out and then there's actually room for this stupid motor mount to come out. <sighs> I would shudder to think what you would do if the bolts broke off. They didn't break off, but a lesson Put never sees on everything, because you might be the next guy going in there. Someone will thank you. Sometimes I work on a vehicle, and I swear the previous guy is just putting in, like, road salt just to make it fun. Here's the motor mount. Looks a little shot. I did get another motor mount. Yay. <sighs> Top view. Still arguing. Still swearing. Still have that plate in. Still have that bracket on the inner fender in there. I'm removing the cam sprockets. And the timing belt. And questioning why I chose to do this. Uh, and the Part of this endeavor, I ended up going out and buying a whole new set of ratchet wrenches that are thinner than the ones I have. I've been using ratchet wrenches, the same ratchets, since the 80s when I first got them. And they work okay, but... You know, the technology's improved and the prices have come down, so I bought some new wrenches to try and get in here. But still, my hands don't fit, my fingers don't bend, my wrists can't do it, I don't have the dexterity. Blech, this job needs to go to a younger person. And it looks like I'm trying to remove the back cover of the timing belt. That makes it easier to get at the cam seals. And pull the water pump off, draining the coolant, because the water pump has to come off. Turns out there are two different styles of timing belt tensioners that you need to get. And you won't know what you have until you get in there, unless there's some distinguishing feature somewhere. What I have is the second design of uh, timing belt tensioner. What I bought was the first design. This is a 2001. It's like the first year of PT Cruisers. Later, I came to the conclusion that uh, this PT Cruiser has had its engine replaced from an automatic. So it's a slightly newer engine with the second design belt tensioner, not this little beastie that I'm opening it right here. Look at that. Shiny and gorgeous and doesn't fit. So someone changed the motor, which runs into a little bit of a problem because when I ordered motor mounts for this, uh, it wasn't the right motor mount because it's not the right motor, which is why the timing belt tensioner is not the right one. The water pumps, on the other hand, they are the same. Lucky. And the belts are the same, too. And I think before I get too terribly far, I will fill this thing back up with coolant just to see that I don't have any leaks before I button it all back together. There was no evidence of oil leaking from the cam seals or the crank seal, so I did not actually change those. Probably should have, but there's a gamble there. You can go, should I change them? They're not leaking now. There's always the possibility I do something wrong and now they will leak. Or I can go back in again later when they do leak. On the other hand, I'm willing to spend large sums of money for on motor oil so it all leaks out, so I don't have to go back in here and do this again. It'll be fine. Still arguing with trying to put that plate back in. I'm not even sure how I got it out at this point. So unless you want to find some creative combinations of colorful euphemisms, you're going to want to remove this bracket, which is attaching to the front strut tower. There is a bolt in through here and a nut in through there. And presumably that frees up enough room to get everything apart. I didn't do it that way. There was some language. Carry on. So with that bracket removed, things went better. Not awesome, but better. A little bit more accessible. A um, couple things to be aware of in places where you cannot actually see. If you get yourself a nice stainless steel ruler, I guess it doesn't have to be stainless, but a ruler. There are four lines on the cam sprockets. Make sure they all line up in a line, and then you know you got the cam aligned properly. Luckily, the cam lobes are on the valves opening in the wrong place, which makes it a challenge to uh, keep the cams stationary. Lucky me. Then, when you got the tension happening, you need to 
make sure the little pigtail of the tensioner lines up between all those cracks right there. And you can't really see it, so good luck. So now I'm filling up the coolant. Uh, I think I actually did not run the stuff I drained back in. I bought some more coolant. And no evidence of leakage. So we put the covers back on with the teeny tiny itsy bitsy little bolts that hold them on place. Um, I think... Bah. What am I doing right now? I'm regretting my choices in life is what I'm doing right now. Oh, the useless front middle mount in there. The harmonic balancer gets put back on. The lower motor mount needs to get replaced because, whew, this thing was hard on motor mounts. Check this thing out, eh? Knackered. I can see why they put three motor mounts on one side of the engine and only one on the other, but this thing's pretty hard on equipment. No difference between manual transmissions and automatics with this mount, so stuff it in. And of course, Chrysler seems to use the metric wrenches that nobody else uses, so you have to make sure you have those as well. Good heavens, if they'd stick with the typical imports like 10, 12, 14, 17, 19, life would be easier, but oh no. Uh, another element of colorful expressions is trying to tighten the alternator belt because that's almost impossible to get to. So this is the replacement motor mount for a manual transmission. What? This is the motor mount that came with it, which is for an automatic transmission. But what I have is a manual transmission. So, uh, now we have the right one. Garbage. So when I don't need parts in a hurry, I usually get them from Rock Auto because the local part suppliers can't even touch the prices of Rock Auto, including shipping and exchange. However, returning stuff to Rock Auto is sometimes a little bit of a challenge. And if it's not too expensive, I'm just like, screw it, I'll keep it. I don't know what I'll do with it, but I'll keep it. Maybe somebody I know will be doing something with a PT Cruiser and I can just give them a motor mount and say, Use this and think of me. So putting it all back together, I'm not charging the AC at this point. I will later. Hey, remember this view? See that invisible, hard to get to power steering pump? Yep, I can't see it either. But we're going to put it back together with an air ratchet because you just can't get in there. Do you have an air ratchet? You need an air ratchet. In fact, air ratchets, universals and extensions are your friend with this. And painkillers. Lots of painkillers. And probably a counselor. Putting the cruise control back on whatever it was I disconnected that didn't think I needed to disconnect it, but ended up disconnecting it later because I forgot to disconnect it because I didn't know. And then we're putting a battery in, brand new battery, because the other battery that it came with was done. Discovered that Motomaster Eliminator batteries are AGM batteries. Uh, it's like glass, fiberglass, or some kind of mat or something, like Skookum. They're like a, an Optima kind of battery on the inside. I didn't know that. So that's kind of cool. Good to know. Good batteries. Cleaning up the post nice and shiny. Uh, put the air filter in. I don't remember if I put a new one in. Let's put it all back together and see what we got left. Wheels. Oh my gosh. I need a break on this. We'll deal with the air conditioning at some point. So the timing belt is in and I think it's safe to say we learned three things today or three things over the past couple days, if I'm honest. One, we learned how to construct creative sentences using colorful metaphors of the King's English. Second, we learned we're gonna pay our mechanics whatever they ask to do this job, and we're gonna bring them a case of their favorite beer. And third, we're not gonna buy one of these ever again, because, oh my gosh, no thank you. Mind you, we got it for cheap, because the labor to do this is so much, and but cheap cars and the subsequent amount of labor usually requires a price and that price for me is called Volterran, Ibuprofen and uh, gin. Uh, but my kid's going for his driver's license next week so this thing's ready to go with a new timing belt that's good for another 100,000 K assuming everything else survives but uh, here we are man we're gonna see what this is like on the road in the coming days. We will be doing a video shortly 
on AC because we had to split the AC system open to do the job and I'm gonna try and refill it and make it work I'll probably put a video up here or wherever YouTube puts those videos somewhere and I might even mention it in the discussion as I edit this video which I haven't done yet because I'm recording it right now man long monologue there we go so as always thanks for watching take care